As if a salinity swing wasn't bad enough, I'm having dinos now. <sighs> Here's how I solve it, let's get into it. So if you've been following my journey, you would know that I've been battling cyano since almost the start of the tank. And just when I thought that the cyano were all gone, I started dealing with dino flagellants, or dino for short. To be fair, I do not think that they are correlated. I just think that it's in regards to a water chemistry issue. And I'm quite bummed about having dinos and I just can't seem to catch a break in terms of having the tank run smoothly. I mean I had cyano, then I had the salinity swing and now dinos. But that's Murphy's law where anything that can go wrong will go wrong. But anywho, I dealt with dinos before in my previous tanks, so this is not new. I thought I would do just a quick video on how to handle it and what to consider. It all started with some diatoms on the sand bed. I felt that it was quite strange that I had diatoms on the sand bed because usually they don't show up unless there's some form of silica that is introduced to the tank. So naturally I went to check, check my RODI water because that's one of the key ways that silica actually enters your tank. And that was fine, it showed zero TDS. So I was quite puzzled as to what was the cause. My nitrates and phosphates had not bottomed out so the chances of dinos are quite low. Over the next few days, the di diatoms seemed to get a lot worse and I didn't know why but I just had a sinking feeling that it was dinos. So what I did was that I waited for the lights to go off at night and true enough, the supposed diatoms were gone. That's one of the key signs that it is dinos and I had a sinking feeling and knew that it was most probably dinos. So with that, it started my battle with dinos. I want to do a video just to give a quick idea and guide on how to solve my specific form of dinos. And in no way am I saying this is the best way or the only way, but I just hope that this will be helpful for everybody who's battling dinos. So a quick overview of it, it is actually a form of algae that comes in many different forms. So some look like cyano, others look like bryopsis, and some look like diatoms. They're not just unsightly, but in many cases they compete with corals for space. And in other cases, they actually can kill invertebrates and fishes because they are toxic in nature. So with that, here are the steps that I took to solve my dino issue. The first thing I told myself is do not panic. As per every kind of nuisance, algae is important to not panic. So I had to assure myself that this was not the end of the world. It's just another bump in the road and I should not be panicking. It is very easy to take drastic action such as dosing some additives or going mad at the rocks to remove your dinos but as per any algae, it is important to know what is the cause and what form of algae you are dealing with. I've seen so many people leave the hobby because of dinos or some algae outbreak and it's definitely heartbreaking to see your tank turn from this beautiful reef tank to a hot mess. And even for myself, I had to reassure myself that this is just a phase and I can solve it and many many reefers have solved dino issues in the tank so if you are battling it, hang in there, you can solve it too. After calming myself down, the next step was to make sure that I had dinos and not some other form of algae. So this to me is one of the most crucial and important steps because the methods of dealing with dinos are largely different from dealing with other forms of algae and in some cases they are the direct opposite. And what I mean by that is that if, let's say you have a green hair algae problem, the solution in most cases is to decrease your nutrients. But in the case of dinos, you usually want to increase your nutrients. It makes it so complicated because dinos look very much like other algae, so you need to be able to tell them apart. The only way to fully know if it's dino is to use a microscope. You can never be 100% sure that it is dino unless you use a microscope because they look very similar to other forms of algae and they are almost indistinguishable to the naked eye. I hate to say that a microscope is almost a must because not everyone is able to get their hands on a microscope but that is the only way to know if you truly truly have dinos. And to know that you have dinos is just a start. You need to know what form you have. Dinos come in many different types and different forms. So what I did was that I borrowed a microscope from one of my reefing friends. And as you can see, the circular round blocks are dinos. You don't have to match it with different forms of possible dinos using pictures to determine what form they are. 
And in my case, I have um, I'm going to butcher the name, but it's pronounced as amphiodinium. Am- amphiodinium. <laughs> I'm going to put the name right here. This form of dinos are largely on the sand bed and when the lights go off, they go into the sand bed. It is so important to know what form you have because some of the dinos actually go into the water column and by using a UV sterilizer, you're able to beat it over time. But with amphidelium, they don't really travel into the water column, so a different method of treating them is important. I'm also thankful that I had this form of dinos because in most cases they do not really affect corals because they stay largely in the sand bed and are not that toxic which means that though they are very difficult to get rid of they do not need any drastic measures you can kind of like ride it out So once I knew what form of dinos I had the next step is to figure out why I had it Even as I'm filming this video I'm not 100% 100% sure why I have dinos. My phosphates have been stable at around 0.06 to 0.08 and nitrates are at around 10 to 11 for the past few months. And this just doesn't make sense because most of the time, dinos come about due to your nutrients being too low. The only conclusion that I can draw is that there is some issue with my test kit. So I decided to order a test kit from another brand and I will test it out and compare the results of both of my test kits to figure out if my test kits have not been accurate. Admittedly, in my Aqua Forest coral food test, which if you all have been following, I've been testing out all the different coral foods, my phosphates did drop by 0.02 from an average of 0.09 to an average of around 0.07 to 0.06. But I honestly don't think this is the main issue. So once I'm aware of why I have dinos and what form of dinos I have, I wanted to add in some competitive organisms. And this includes things like phytoplankton, cocoa pods, and bacteria. Doing so will help to attack and put pressure on the dinos in multiple aspects and compete with them for the nutrients in the water. And even if that doesn't work, there is no harm because it really just helps to improve the biodiversity in your tank, which in my books is always a good thing. It's also important to note that even as you add in bacteria, to be aware of your nitrates and phosphates as they may bottom out. So do ensure that they are at the right levels at all times. For me, I started testing every two days just to make sure that my nitrates and phosphates are in check. I started dosing phytoplankton, microbacter 7, and I added a new bag of cocoa pots to the tank. The final step is to induce a diatom bloom. You do so by adding silica into the tank. I am personally using sponge excel, but you can look for water glass, which is a different form of silica, which comes in a bottle that is highly concentrated. The whole purpose of dosing silica is to induce a diatom bloom. So even though diatoms look ugly, diatoms can outgrow the dinos and suffocate them. So if you are fighting against amphidinium like I am, it is important not to clean the sand because you want the diatoms to grow over them. So removing the diatoms from the sand will just give more rooms for the dinos to grow. So I started dosing silica and I'm testing my silica and I'm hoping to raise it to about 2 to 3 ppm. And at this stage, I am dosing it daily and I'm testing my silicates every 2 days. They are currently undetectable, so I have been increasing my dose um, every 2-3 to three days just so that I start to get a reading on my test kit. Okay, so that's the few steps that I have in defeating Dino. There are many other ways that people have claimed to use to tackle such issues and that includes things like raising the temperature, adding Dino X, a complete tank blackout or taking out the sand. I don't want to go in depth into why I don't want to use such methods in this video. I will probably save that for another video, but each of them have a certain drawback or things that I'm not really comfortable with. And I just don't want to do something to my tank that I am not very comfortable with. Additionally, in the past, I have um, induced a Dalton Bloom before to defeat Dino. So I kind of want to stick to what I know best and hopefully that solves the issue. Right now, at this stage as I'm filming this video, I am in the middle of the storm and I can start to see some diatoms grow on the glass as well as on the sand bed. And I know it is diatoms because I have access to a microscope. 
So my tank looks really ugly now, but I will just have to deal with it in the meantime. I'll give you guys an update along the weeks and hopefully I can beat this battle against Dino. So with that, I think I will end my video right here. Thank you for watching, stay safe, love your tank, till next time, see ya!